Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with Judge Janine Pirro, Jessica Tarlov, Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Embattled Harvard President Claudine Gay resigning as the leader of the most powerful Ivy League school in the country. It took both her disastrous anti-Semitism testimony before Congress and 50 allegations of plagiarism to end the shortest presidency in the university's history. Just six months. Gay not mentioning either of those scandals in a statement, but seems to imply that racism was a factor in her ouster. She said it was, quote, frightening to be subjected to personal attacks and threats fueled by racial animus. Gay's downfall started when she could not answer this question in front of Congress. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? It depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. Ooh. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik says gay stepping down is only the beginning. We have seen a failure of leadership from Claudine Gay, a failure of moral leadership, but also a failure of academic integrity, which is a cornerstone of any higher education institution. I believe, as we continue our congressional investigation, that we will uncover what will be the greatest scandal in higher education, because the Harvard Corporation members themselves are complicit in this cover-up of her plagiarism, and again, most importantly, their failure to protect Jewish students on campus. No word yet from former President Barack Obama, who privately lobbied on Harvard President Claudine Gay's behalf during the anti-Semitism controversy. But we are hearing from the Reverend Al Sharpton. He said this, this is an attack on every black woman in this country who's put a crack in the glass ceiling. It's an assault on the health, strength, and future of diversity, equity, and inclusion at a time when corporate America is trying to back out of billions of dollars in commitments. Despite resigning as president, Gay is still on the payroll as a faculty member. She just doesn't have to do the president's job anymore. So many different angles here. Um, one thing, Greg, we should point out, I think, is that the Washington Free Beacon mm -hmm. was the one who was pointing out all of this plagiarism based on old shoe leather reporting that was available to any other media outlet. The Washington Post could have done it, but it was the Washington Free Beacon who really... That's what's so funny about her. Uh, I mean, it's not a surprise that she claims racism, that she's a victim of racism for losing her job after this moral implosion at the hearing and then this countless examples of plagiarism and some made by black scholars. And yet it's still racism. No, Mrs. Gay or Ms. Gay. It wasn't racism that cost you the job. It was racism that got you the job, right? Any white person had her pedigree, they wouldn't be running a school of fish. And this is the problem with DEI and ESG, is that everything that it infects, it destroys, whether it's academia, corporations, the military. If you designate a small group out of a larger general population as the preferred hire, you force every recruiter to go to that select group and the supply cannot meet the demand. It's a math problem. So you end up being forced to hire what's left, even if that person is not qualified or even competent. It's, a, it's mathematical racism. And you choose an inept candidate over somebody else who's far better because they don't fit the right color. That choice, however, makes it harder for places like Harvard and any company to fire somebody even if they are ripe for firing. And you know what's funny? It really isn't Gay's fault because the system awarded her into a slot that was beyond her current capabilities because of her skin color. And if you make a deal with the DEI devil, you're going to mm -hmm. die by the, with the accusation of racism. So everybody made this bed. I love the fact that they all have to sleep in it. Watch this take from Matt Egan. He was on CNN. We should note that um, Claudine Gay has not been accused of stealing anyone's ideas in any of her writings. Uh, she's been accused of sort of a, more like a copying uh, other people's writings without attribution. So it's been more sloppy attribution than stealing anyone's Copy. ideas. Judge, what is the definition of plagiarism? <laughs> I, I have to close my mouth before I can answer that, Dana. Plagiarism is actually that. It's the <laughs> right. taking of other people's <laughs> ideas and words. Yeah. Um, the amazing 
interesting part of this is that there are 50 credible allegations of plagiarism. And when you look back into the history of Claudine Gay, you realize the woman has never even published a book. She has written nothing uh, that has any seminal contributions to her field, according to people who have looked at, at her, Brett Stevens in particular. In 26 years, she's written 11 articles. I mean, the, the, it's incredible. But what the, what the problem is here is that she was held to a different standard than other students at Harvard. And there was an article that was written, a letter to the editor of the Crimson, the newspaper at Har Harvard. And a person who um, was responsible for, quote, upholding the standards of academic excellence said it would be the worst day when the kid at Harvard had to come before our committee. That person would cry. They might be suspended. They would have a, a, a tarnish on their record. And yet, she's got 50 of them. And what did they do? They, they they, they relegated her to, you know, this system at this level, where as president, she wasn't touched. And I think that her race has advantaged her. And the fact that she has in no way been held to account for not protecting others is the ultimate hypocrisy, hypocrisy. When you see in her statement when she's leaving, she says, it is so frightening to find myself the target of threats. Mm -hmm. Well, if you had any intelligence, you would understand that the reason you are where you are is because you didn't protect others who were the targets of real threats. And finally, we should realize that Harvard was started in 1698 as a divinity school and that there were people who, were, who went there to learn about religion and divinity. It was non-denominational. So repeated numerous violations. She didn't deserve to be there in the first place, and I'm glad she's gone. And one of the things that the divinity school and other schools should teach is you help develop the character yeah. of the person. And so taking responsibility and being accountable for your actions is one of those things. Harvard is still half-heartedly defending her, Jessica, yeah. and the pain is not going to end for the school until they acknowledge the wrongdoing, because there's the plagiarism issue, but it's almost as if the anti-Semitism was fine, like that was excused after the hearing, but it was the plagiarism that got her in the end. I think that she suffered from, and all three of the presidents who showed up at the hearing suffered from an attack of legalese, right? They just went as if they had no soul. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is what the lawyers who prepped me for this said. And I would encourage everyone. There was a really interesting piece in The New York Times about how the president of Columbia has avoided falling into this because they had the, the campus was rife with pro-Palestinian protests. There were professors that were speaking yeah. out and she has really kind of studied the ship. And one thing that she ended up doing was not going to that testimony. She was invited to sit there with the rest of them, and she had to be at a climate change conference. It was already pre <laughs> <Right. laughs> Climate change that conference. That will excuse everything. I, Next time, Jesse, say uh, you are going sorry. to a climate change conference. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was about how different her trajectory was that she was not subject to that line of questioning and even given yeah. the opportunity to use talking points that someone else got you. I was struck by two elements of Claudine Gay's statement first and foremost, that there was no apology. And they teach you to apologize and also how important forgiveness is and that we are a forgiving society if we're going back to divinity school roots. Mm -hmm. So there was no apology about letting down the academic community. And that's right. something that's really important. It, it's a small club, the Ivory Tower. I know people, especially some people at this table, like to make fun <laughs> of the Ivory Tower, but people work really hard mm -hmm. to get there and they take low paying jobs and they kill themselves to publish multiple papers a year mm. to get the kind of credentials to be able to go on to those jobs. The second part was no apology over what I imagine she feels is a misunderstanding of her stance on anti-Semitism and right. the Jewish community. And to then turn the statement into something about immutable characteristics, well, guess what? Those kids are being harassed because of immutable characteristics. Mm -hmm. Not getting into the whether Judaism is a race or a religion or whatever it is, but you're born a certain way, right? You're born a Jew. And they're having intifada and genocide chanted out of them, at them because of the way that they were born. And I thought that was really a missed opportunity. All future presidents of these universities need to be subject to this level of scrutiny. They will be um, now. Maybe. Probably, I, mean, I would imagine. I, and it lets down people this who believe in This is an opportunity, DEI. Jesse, where President Biden could have a sister soldier moment and come out and say, this was wrong. But... 
he can't come out and talk about plagiarism. <laughs> he can't come out and talk about anything, Dana. <laughs> uh, that's also, yes, that's also true. Uh, my sources at Harvard told me my powerful monologue mm. on Harvard in December was kind of the breaking point. Okay. <laughs> and the trustees had heard enough and contemplated and reflected over the Christmas vacation. And it was time to eliminate her. Mm -hmm. Power. My other sources are saying this is about money. And Harvard's just like a hedge fund that happens to teach a few classes. <laughs> they have a $50 billion endowment. And she just lost them a billion dollars right. in 10 days. That's what you call a bad quarter. Harvard can lose its reputation, but they can't lose its money. Mm -hmm. DEI is a cancer. And we have to root it out through sunlight. And we have to expose it for what it is. And it's by discriminating against gender, race, even ideology. And we have to get back to what made America great, merit and judging people on their actions. And Al Sharpton, a fraud who's defending a fraud, is out there saying that this woman was fired because she was a black woman who cracked the glass ceiling. She used someone else's head to crack it. <laughs> she stole half of her scholarly work. Eight out of the 17 published articles were plagiarized. And then Barack Obama, who actually saved a man from a plagiarism scandal, is lobbying to save another person from plagiarism. It, 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 why are black leaders in this country rallying around other disgraced black Americans just because they're black? It's an embarrassment. Is this like the OJ is innocent situation? It shouldn't be like this. We have to get back to what's worked for 100 years in this country, judging people on what they produce. And she's produced nothing. She's produced a loss of a billion dollars. And I'm sorry, Harvard actually did the right thing. Yeah. They told everybody that it's really about merit and not about skin color. And now Jesse Jr. will be applying early decision. But you uh. do. <laughs> You do have to admit that if you're going back hundreds, 100, 200 years, that black people were restricted from even getting into these places. Right. They didn't even have a chance. No, not a, yeah. of course for you, but I want an of I course from Jesse. Well. I, I want, of course. They can hire a very well-qualified African-American woman to run Harvard As now. long as she's so not conservative. Right. As long as yeah. she has to be, she has to be on the same I bet, intellectual. I bet, I bet right. they won't call Condi Rice. Yeah, yeah. Or Dr. Carol Swain. Yes. She was someone who I believe her, her yes. uh, which she plagiarized from. Yep. Uh, also, Jesse, I think that um, one thing to point out on that Al Sharpton statement, here's a primetime investigation waiting to happen. What he says is, this is all about corporations trying to get out of billions of dollars of commitments that they made to, to DEI. And that is a story worth following, because if you follow the money on that front, the corporations are saying, we're done with this now. And that's coming from the top, but also maybe the bottom. Okay. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.